The terms Jim, Jim file and the bundler are often used in the Ruby community. Uh, so what exactly do they mean and how do we use them? So first we'll go over what is a gem. So on the Ruby Gems website, it describes Ruby Gems software allows you to easily download, install, and use Ruby packages on your system. So these packages are called gems, um, and they basically allow you to bundle up code and then include it in Ruby projects. So often you'll take a gem that somebody else has written and drop it straight into your project, which saves you having to write that code. Gems perform functionality such as uh, converting a Ruby object to JSON, uh, pagination, uh, they'll have nice libraries for interacting with APIs. And Jekyll itself is a gem, as well as many plugins, including the Jekyll Feed plugin, Jekyll SEO tag, and Jekyll Archives. And a gem file is Ruby's dependency management system. Or in other words, it's a list of gems a project needs to run. So we use gem files in Jekyll when we have Jekyll plugins. Let's add a gem file to our bakery store site and use the Jekyll feed and Jekyll SEO tag plugins. So first we'll create a file in the root of our site called gem file. And the first line of a gem file is going to set our source. And this source tells us where to download the gems from. And unless you have a really advanced use case, uh, just using rubygems.org here will be fine. So source is https rubygems.org. Next we'll include the Jekyll gem um, and we'll set a particular version for this gem. So we'll use the latest version at the moment which is 3.1.6. And now we're going to create a group for our plugins. And you don't have to do this, but it saves a step later on. Um, usually, once you've installed the gems, you have to include or require them into your Jekyll project in underscore config.yaml. Whereas if we have them in this group, uh, that just happens automatically. So then I'll specify my um, Jekyll feed plugin and my Jekyll SEO tag plugin. Okay, that's our gem file. So now we need to install the gems in the gem file. Um, and this is typically done by a program called the Bundler. So first we'll install Bundler. Um, so we can just type in gem install Bundler. Now that's installed, we can run bundle install. So this is going to perform two tasks. One, it's going to create a gem.lock file if it doesn't already exist, which it won't in this case. This is an automatically generated file, and it's going to include all the gems in our gem file with the addition of a version number, uh, even if we didn't specify it in the gem file. And what that's going to do is we can now share this project with another person, and when they run bundle install, it will install the exact same versions of the gems that we have on our system. Uh, so it just creates consistency. So once it's created gemfile.lock, it's going to download all the gems. Let's go ahead and run bundle install. Okay, now all the gems have been installed. Let's have a quick look at gemfile.lock. So this is the file. We would never need to actually edit this file because it's auto-generated, but it's still interesting to see what's going on here. So we have the gems we specified and the version numbers of those gems. And we also have um, a sublist of gems that each gem requires. So for example, Jekyll requires all these gems to be able to run. Okay, let's have a look at how we run Jekyll serve now. So we're back on the command line here and if you're building your site, you would either use Jekyll build or Jekyll serve. The problem we're going to have now is the gems aren't necessarily in our environment. Um, so it might give us errors about uh, can't find the Jekyll SEO tag gem. There's also a problem where 
if you had multiple versions of this gem installed, uh, it might not know which one is the correct version to use. So we can get around this with prepending this command with bundle exec. And what that does is it runs the command and includes the gems in our gem file, and that's it. So it just allows us to keep the environment much more consistent. This tutorial was brought to you by Cloud Cannon, the cloud content management system for Jekyll. For more free tutorials like this one, check out learn.cloudcannon.com.